Whose idea was it to leave this early? Hello, I'm David Gray, and I feel like my shoes have barely dried out from the Boundary Waters canoe trip, and I find myself again on the road for the fifth trip of the 2021 season. It is certainly what I affectionately call O-Dark 30, and I am on the road to Indianapolis International Airport, where I'm going to meet up with Jeremy, uh, YouTube channel All Things Outdoors, and we are going to be flying out to Denver, Colorado, where, if all things go well, my son Christian will pick us up at the airport, and then we'll head out on the six and a half hour drive to Pinedale, Wyoming, and the epic Wind River Range. We're going to be meeting up with Carl and Travis in Pinedale, and we're once again going to be staying at the wonderful Log Cabin Motel and doing all things Pinedale this afternoon and tonight. And we'll be starting the hiking tomorrow from the Elkhart Park Trailhead. We're going to be doing a hike very similar to what Carl and I did in September of 2019 out to Island Lake, with uh, one notable exception this time. Carl and I, I think, have always regretted that we uh, didn't plan it accordingly to make it up to the Titcomb Basin that year, and we are hoping to remedy it this year by staying two nights at Island Lake. So, first night, we're once again going to be staying at Hobbs Lake, then make it over to Island Lake on the second night, stay there again the third night. The third day, we're going to be doing a day trip up to the Incredible Basin, an area that I have always wanted to get to, and hopefully we'll take care of that this year. And then the last day, we're going to hike it all the way back to the car, similar to what Carl and I did in 2019. Weather-wise, it looks really, really good. Sunny skies each day, highs in the 60s, upper 60s, and low 70s, lows in the 40s. And the forecast shows very little chance of rain, although we are going to be in the mountains in July, which means any time you could get an afternoon thunderstorm. One thing I am concerned about is mosquitoes. We're doing this trip pretty early in the season like we did the first time we came out here, and on that trip we ran into uh, more than our fair share of them, so we'll have to see. It has been a very dry winter and early spring out there, so hopefully that'll, that'll help keep them down a little bit. And with that, let's get out to the airport and get this very long first day of travel out to Pinedale going. Denver, 5.40 a.m. on time so far. Good start. Hey, I didn't even see you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I just had my back to you. I was like, I'll come over and sit with you. Today in Denver. It's like a beautiful day in the neighborhood. No snow. <laughs> Made it to Denver. Get our bags and meet up with Christian. And then uh, six and a half more hours to find Dale. Welcome to Denver. This is Mary Michael Hancock. As we gather this season. Oh, this is the Denver Airport. Welcome to Denver. This is Mary Michael Hancock. As we gather this season. Learned this lesson the hard way a couple times, so <laughs> make life a little easier with a cart. Hey, Christian. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for getting us. Yeah. Jeremy. Jeremy. Good, good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> right. Feels good to be here. <laughs> note that they're almost giving the gas away here. Oh, that's like a bargain. I'm never going to complain about gas prices in Indiana again. Uh, U.S. Highway 191 to Pinedale is about 100 miles from here. Made it back to Pinedale. Third time's a charm. Well, we have arrived at the Log Cabin Motel. 
cabin number three. You can see it up there. And this is not the cabin I thought I had reserved. I thought we were staying in the same cabin that we've stayed at every time we've been here, which is cabin number 23 with not the most ideal porch, but we'll make it work for one night. We'll probably use Travis and Carl are out on the main road. We'll probably use their cabin as our as our party cabin. A mandatory shot of the log cabin motel. Travis and Carl have the main cabin with the sign. We're in the grocery store buying our real food. This is what we settled upon. Seasoned ribeyes, and we also have another package of little New York strips. Now we're looking for the uh, potatoes. How much Let's go is with that? the seasoned ones? Yeah, yeah, that'll be better. Okay. And that's 16. pretty much already good and frozen. Heading over to the Outfitter and then uh, Wind River Brewing Company for dinner. It's tradition. Does he like that mouth or this No, one? he likes it. Yeah. Got, his hats are cool. I didn't realize how much hats are now. We're looking for accessories now. Yeah, there we go. That's a good email for you. <laughs> uh, Covers both ends. I just need to work on my brand marketing here like these days, dude. Here's the cool thing about the uh, great outdoor shop. The Wind River Brewing Company is right across the street. I know you can't see that. We're looking right into the sun, but that's where we're going for dinner. I'm sure David's camera is really getting my crack-filled eyes right now. Pretty good. <laughs> you gotta keep them open, man. I'm telling you. We're not done yet. <laughs> We're even, struggling. We haven't even brought out the buffalo juice. Cheers, Cheers, guys. It's a good trip. <laughs> the lightest white guy. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I'll, I'll carry the pan. I, I already have a spot. The skillet. I have my car almost got bit by a rattlesnake. It was duh. Never duh. Saw, it. saw it. I never saw it. And I'm like, Carl. Isn't that the worst? I said, Carl. I'm I said, Carl. you see just what you walk by? This isn't too bad either, is it? No, this is not bad. This is what I had in mind only on a bigger porch. I was going to say, it's a smaller porch. <laughs> but it'll work just fine. We got the log cabin motel sign right there. Lit up. We got perfectly we dry air and beautiful weather. We the center and called on. Really, the center called. So the original way they had, uh, I'm trying to think of the guy. He's Where's Dad? Dad's? Huh? Where's Dad's? Dad's like, we, we, so. yeah. Oh, we went to Big Sandy. Okay. Trail, we're trying to get there by 10, right? Yep. Yeah, we want to be at the trail by 10 or a little before. Good first day on the Wind River Range Trip 2021. A very long travel day, but Pinedale has once again treated us well. Uh, it's hard to describe the atmosphere here. The, Air is dry, the skies are beautiful, the sunset's incredible. The people are all about the outdoor activities here and they're very helpful. Wind River Range trip, the travel portion of the trip, the stressful travel portion of the trip is over. Hiking starts tomorrow. Good morning. Welcome to uh, day number two of the trip. First day of backpacking. As you can see, it's another crappy day in Pinedale. <laughs> this weather is just absolutely spectacular. Not a cloud in the sky, no humidity. Temperatures are supposed to be in the you know, 70s, probably up in the mountains, lows in the 40s. In a few minutes here, when everybody's up and running around, we will head to the Heart and Soul Cafe for the traditional last meal before backpacking. Very excited to get hiking here on day number two, first day of hiking. We don't have the board up there anymore. Yeah, I used to have everything up on this board up there. There's a board right up there. And another, it's not mountain house moment. <laughs> Breakfast of champions. Did you say with champions or out champions? Whoa! <laughs> Breakfast of heart and soul. We are loaded up and pretty much ready to head up to the trailhead. Packs are a little heavy. I'm carrying extra water. I remember what happened to Carl and I that first day the last time. I think we got kind of dehydrated. And then we've also got a ton of uh, just like real food that we're bringing up steaks. And then Carl and Travis got sandwiches. <laughs> but the good news is we'll start lightening it up almost immediately. But it's going to be pretty heavy starting out of the, out of the trailhead. Not a bad morning for a hike. I'm closing in on the Elkhart Park trailhead. And it is definitely one uphill climb. Ah, there you go. Now we're seeing the winds up close and personal. Well, we have arrived at the Elkhart Park trailhead. Not as crowded as when Carl and I were here last time, though. 
Not nearly as crowded. Final gear prep here. Jeremy's little day pack. <laughs> we did load him down with steaks and there's a frying pan in there and a little oil. <laughs> That's what happens when you bring too small of a pack. <laughs> He who is the lightest carries the That's right. I'm probably still the lightest. <laughs> yeah, you I'm are. pretty sure. I can guarantee you're lighter than me. But. I, I use, I've carried 23, and it was a little rough, but manageable. <laughs> Travis with his, this is not Mountain House sandwiches. <laughs> 25? Yeah. That'll be our new record, if so. 26.7. That's a new record. Wow. Yeah, that's... Thanks. I think this is going to be a new record. 30, 37. Oh, I'll bet, I'll bet, it, I'll bet it's 40. 40.0. Wow. And I was right. <laughs> you were exactly right. Hey, I carried a 110 pound Duluth pack. I can carry a 40 pound pack. 36.6. All right. It's not bad. How many beers did you want to your pack? Well, I've already got the 12. <laughs> well, we are geared up and almost ready to go. We're carrying some heavy packs. <laughs> At least I know I am. I'll tell you, carrying that Duluth pack on the uh, canoe trip, about 100 pounds. This actually feels relatively light. It's a little warm, 81 degrees <laughs> to get started. Is that what it is? That's what it says. We are hiking Elkhart Park on our way to Hobbs Lake. Little self-registration kiosk. No permits required in the winds. It's one of the reasons why we're here. <laughs> well, we have been told that there was a microburst activity in the winds last year that still has the big sandy trails pretty much closed down with down trees that they haven't been able to clear yet these have clearly already been cleared so we're very thankful for that but this is what the trail's been looking like very well traveled very smooth very easy up to hobbs i remember it wasn't too bad of a hike there's a couple little ups and downs but nothing too severe I don't know, then i thought it would be i thought it'd be in the lower 70s it's actually a little over 80 and sunny and dry you need drinking a lot of water today another little stretch where Thankful not to be out here when whatever happened, happened. The trail has thankfully levered out, leveled out as we approach what's called Miller Park. The parks out here are kind of big open areas with no trees. Signs of the microburst that occurred here. There have been some stretches that weren't like this, but most were. So whatever came through here, this whole area was, <laughs> was something else. This is Miller Park. That's a lot of stuff. Where are you guys headed? Hobbs and Titcomb. Yeah, the boys are big eaters. I guess. <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't mind throwing our packs on there, too. <laughs> this is Photographer's Point. I think they chose a good name for it. Mm -hmm. Nice little spot after Photographer's Point. I remember this overlook. We'll go right by, you can see the trail by that lake. You can kind of see it going up the other side. At the very top of it, that's Hobbs Lake. That's not a bad view, huh? What do you think? Pretty cool. Who looking forward to that climb? Pretty nice. Yeah, no, not. It's pretty. <laughs> Don't want to do the climb, but Hobbs Lake's at the top, and that's where we're going. Welcome to Hobbs Lake. That is a site for sore knees and feet and legs and shoulders and everything else. That trail there we think goes to some campsites on this side of the lake. We're actually going uh, to the far end to try to find the campsite Carl and I had two years ago. Right. So we're on Hobbs Lake and we are on that little trail Carl and I found back in 2019. This brings back memories. Hopefully the campsite at the end of this long trail will be empty. This looks familiar. Minus oh. all the down trees. Oh. It was good to be in camp, but I'll probably put my tent right where Christian is. Carl set his tent right over there last time, but you can see there's plenty of spots for tents. We sat right up there against those rocks and enjoyed it. There's also tent spots up on top of the hill over there. And then right over there, 
down to where Christian is, that other cool little pond. But we made it. Camp for the night. Oh, knees are more than a little sore. <laughs> getting it filled. So that's close enough. Well, I got camp all set up. This is Carl's got a duplex here and I've got my triplex and I think that's a Lakshin or something. Duplex knockoff from China. Over here in the trees, Christian's got his hammock set up. Travis is in the B-suite. There's actually a couple really nice campsites up on top of the hill that we had found last time. He's up there. So here's the whole camp. I don't think I ever really showed this the last time we were here two years ago. A really pretty spectacular setting and I was very pleased it was available. Very sure there's probably plenty of other sites around Hobbs Lake. We've never really gone looking for them. This is the only one we know, <laughs> and it works out well for us. So it's available, but if you ever come to Hobbs Lake, I'm sure you can go all the way around and find various sites around here, but this one's a pretty good one. A little before five o'clock, we're all kind of wigged out a little bit from the altitude and the dehydration and just getting turned into jerky by the dry air and the sun and the 80 degree temperatures today. We'll probably get going on a cheddar cheese spread here in a few minutes, and then we've got uh, steak and potatoes for dinner. That should be pretty tasty, so it'll be good first night, and then on to Island Lake tomorrow. Beautiful here, isn't it? Look at this. Well, we must have got this out of the recycling bin. <laughs> When did it expire? So, oh, it was just a few years ago. Yeah. Well, it is the uh, cheddar cheese spread moment. We haven't had one of these in a while. There was no cheddar cheese spread on the canoe trip. It seemed the Wind River Range was a worthy cause. Perfectly rehydrated for all those who were questioning my measurements. Jeremy is the Bailey? newbie. <laughs> so he gets the uh, Justin Memorial slash Bailey Memorial, and no, Bailey is not dead. <laughs> I don't mean it that way. Justin is not dead, I don't mean it that way. Just memory, memorial from Thank them you. being on the trips with us. Yeah, so. That's not your first cheddar cheese spread, is it? Mm, no. You must have done it somewhere. Uh, Eagle's Nest. Ah, yes. What's Gorge. Eagle's Nest? Uh, Red River Gorge. Thank you. Oh, that's good. Thank you. I haven't had this in a long time. It's perfect for five mm. people. It's good. A nice little appetizer, you know. Even though Carl did get it out of the bin at the Goodwill. <laughs> was that wrong? No, it's not wrong. <laughs> we like aged cheddar cheese spread. <laughs> cheddar cheese spread is done, and we are now making the steaks. Start with the ribeyes. Sound of flavor. <laughs> I don't think anybody's going hungry tonight. I need smell a reason for this because that smells really, really good. Yeah, see, and this is smelling like one really good backcountry meal. I don't know about bears, but I'm about coming over there. <laughs> right, while our steaks rest, we've got the uh, hash brown potatoes seasoned cooking up nicely here. So about the time the steaks are done, a hash brown should be done. Here's what's happening behind the scenes. David's cooking, we're all gravitating. Need some of this rock? I can no, spin over. I'm, I'm gonna stand. Okay. And more like five and a half, if I read the map right. It's still short, a lot shorter than today. We were seven point something today. Seven and a half. Something. Jeremy will have a much lighter load. Well, if you guys need me to carry something else, I will. Okay. We will. I know. It's fine. <laughs> I, will I guess not we agreed to that a little too soon. Yeah. <laughs> you should have held out a little longer, Carl. Good morning. Welcome to 
Day number three of the trip, day number two of backpacking. Big day today, we're heading over to Island Lake. I think it's about six miles, all uphill, but once we get to the lake, we're gonna be staying there for two nights, so that'll be kind of nice. Big day, and then tomorrow's the Titcomb Basin, if all goes well. So not a lot of sleep to be had last night. I think it was a combination of a little bit of being really exhausted from that first day, and dehydration, and a little bit of altitude too, but uh, got through it, and another beautiful morning in the Wind River Range. Get day number two hiking started here. Pretty nice spot to gather water from in the morning, huh? What a beautiful little lake. Where you gather water from at Hobbs Lake is not a real pleasant hike down from our camp. So I'm going to gather all the water that we're going to need for breakfast and for both Christian and I for the day. So I'm going to load up on about almost eight liters of water right now. So I'm going to be here for a little while before I get my Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Dunkin' Donuts coffee this morning is brought to you courtesy of Travis's Jet Boil once again. I think I said once I've probably used this Jet Boil more than Travis has. But I'm okay with that. <laughs> That's way out there. Alrighty. Donuts coffee on a spectacular morning in the Wind River Range in a spot that feels sort of like home. Same first night camp spot Carl and I had in 2019, two years ago. Heading up to Island Lake today. Good way to get it going is with a little Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Yeah. Oh, the perfect. Perfect this morning. Except there's one mosquito in my coffee. <laughs> it's kind of tradition in the winds to be fishing skeeters out of your Dunkin' Donuts coffee. <laughs> this morning, quick breakfast, honey bunches of oats with needle. <laughs> I think we're all kind of in a hurry to get to Island Lake, so kind of racing through it this morning. Mm. Simple, quick, and good. All right, well, we are geared up in our little uh, expedition campsite here is broken down and we have left no trace. Hiking on uh, day number two in the winds. Hiking on day number two over at Island Lake. Finishing the climb up to Seneca, which is definitely one you'll remember if you come out here. But this view up here makes it all worthwhile. Made it to the top. Views start getting really good from here. So, this is Seneca Lake.
making our way past Seneca Lake now, heading over to Little, Little Seneca Lake. Then you get a nice nifty little uphill. <laughs> making progress, I think we're about halfway done, maybe a little more than that. This is Little Seneca Lake. And it's not so much notable for the lake itself, but for what comes after. I have two climbs to go. If I remember correctly, this is the worst one. The one up to the view over looking in. Uh, Highland Lake isn't, isn't as bad, I remember it. So, last big hill coming up. Well, this gives you some perspective. I sometimes say, don't look as steep on camera, but I think this one might. You can see the people coming down and our group going up. All right, this is one of those spots photo op also rest break op you can see the top up there a little farther than it might look and a little steeper than it might look but we're making progress well the bad news is we're still climbing good news is we're nearing the top just past the snow just past the snow there's a good thing to say in the middle of july is the top i believe so we're almost there gives you some perspective on what we just climbed all the way from over in that direction. It is windy, <laughs> which is both good and bad. Cools you off nicely. Also dries you out like beef jerky. Well, we made it to the top. <laughs> like I told them, pretty good view. There's only one better. And that's the one from right on top of that little hill over there that overlooks Island Lake. What do we call that? Sound of music pretty. Is that spectacular or what? Oh man, we're back. Yeah. 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 Almost to the top. Right. Absolutely. Welcome to Island Lake. Wow. That does not get old. We found our home for the night, and it happens to be the same home for the night we had in 2019. <laughs> it ain't easy finding a campsite at Island Lake that's unoccupied, and it is a lot of work looking for them because you're just going up and down. Uh, so eventually we finally just decided, hey, I know where a good campsite is. That'll accommodate all of us. So we're back home again. Same campsite as 2019. Feels good to be in camp. Yeah, first order business is getting some water got a vast improvement from when we used this site two years ago when we had to go all the way to the bottom to the pond to get water. There's a nice little stream over here with a little water waterfall kind of thing. It's perfect water gathering spot and also for rinsing up. This is much nicer this time. camp all set up and we're just kind of all uh, rehydrating and doing our various camp chores. The time is just kind of flying this afternoon. It's already like four o'clock. Gorgeous backdrop to be doing everything in. Uh, wind is howling, which is kind of nice because it's keeping the bugs away. The plan is for the rest of the evening we'll probably get the uh, cheddar cheese spread going here in an hour and a half or so and then it's not going to be dinner like last night. It's going to be the mountain house sort of thing. Unfortunately, we don't have any real food left. A gorgeous day in the winds. Just enjoying our first day at Island Lake. Jeremy hung his bear bag, food bag. I'm not sure this meets the minimum requirements, whatever they are, for a satisfactory bear hang in the winds. But... I'm feeling confident. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll move that to a safer location later. Well, dinner tonight, sadly, is not ribeye steaks. It is... Uh, the next best thing, <laughs> I've been told. Peak refuel, sweet pork and rice. And it's gonna be made even better by the use of Travis's jet boil. Uh, yes, my son Christian did ask me if I own my own stove. But yes, I do own my own stove, so. Prove it. Why, I will later. Careful. Careful. <laughs> Smells good, doesn't it? Mm. This might be a good. Oh man. Okay. We gotta look. We gotta show this. Out. <laughs> that looks so good. They use real meat. Check this out, man. This is like chunks of pulled pork right there. That looks really tasty. 
That's what we're having. Peak refuel, sweet pork and rice. Big Sky International Cozy that we now all seem to have. Keep it warm and snuggly in there for 10 minutes and we'll be having dinner. Probably be having the cheddar cheese spread in between. Dinner is served. Oh wow. Oh man. It's got a big chunk of pork. I don't know. Yeah. Oh wow, well, that's really that's good. Peak refuel, sweet pork and rice is muy bueno. Just makes it easier to, where I don't have to dig out batteries. Dinner festivities are winding down where I'll just kind of relax and then hanging out on the rock here watching the views, but a bunch of haze or maybe even smoke has rolled in here. You can kind of see in the background way over here that mountain used to be clear as can be and you can barely see it anymore, the one in the far distance. So I suspect this might be forest fire smoke from some for forest fires maybe in Colorado. <laughs> When's that boulder gonna roll? I'm trap you down, luckily you got your reach in. There you go, the end of a second day of backpacking in the Wind River Range 2021, a really long day. Everybody's kind of baked. Still kind of hard to beat those kind of views when you hail from the flatlands of Indiana. We are all really looking forward to tomorrow, which is gonna be a stay put in camp here. We don't have to tear down camp and we are gonna be heading up to the Titcomb Basin. Day hike, but I think the scenery and the video and the photography is going to be fantastic. End of day number two. Really looking forward to the Titcomb Basin tomorrow. Good morning, welcome to uh, day number four of the trip, day number three of hiking. We're heading up to the Titcomb Basin today. Not the most comfortable night's sleep. It got very cold last night. Carl got up in the middle of the night and uh, according to his little temperature gauge, it was 35 degrees and it may have gotten a bit colder than that before the dawn, but it's all kind of worth it for these kind of views in the morning. You can't find these just any place. This place is just absolutely spectacular, especially in the morning. Today's a day hiking day, which feels really nice. We don't have to be thinking about tearing down camp or anything, so we can take our time getting ready, start the day with a little Dunkin' Donuts coffee, and see where it goes from there. Tastes about right, you know. Smell a little burned hair on that one. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to hold it in your hand when you light it like that. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts coffee in a lot of places in the backcountry in the morning, but I don't know how many of them are better than this. Wind River Range, just absolutely great place to have a cup of coffee. And especially on the day that we're finally gonna make it up to the Titcomb Basin, so it's gonna be a great day. Oh, that's perfect. It really doesn't get a whole lot better than this. I know I've said that before, but it really doesn't. <laughs> Every good uh, movie has to have a villain in a controversial moment. This controversial moment brought to you by the villain, Jeremy, <laughs> who is corrupting me from Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I guess I'm not supposed to put my hand on in there, sorry. <laughs> what kind of coffee is this? It's, uh, it was just a brand from the grocery store. Generic. Sure. It was like a French Generic movie. grocery store brand. Yeah, from New grounds. adventures in the, whoa, <laughs> in the Wind River Range. All right. <laughs> Generic store-bought <laughs> coffee in the Wind River Range. <laughs> 
Oh man, that is strong. Can you put more in than that? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's also French, French roast. roast, so it's a darker roast. Man, oh, that is good for the second cup of coffee in the winds before we head up to the basin. You okay? The bags are hung, ready for our uh, little day hike over to Titcomb. And for breakfast this morning, we have bacon. Actually, we're going to be doing some, uh, oops, uh, biscuits and gravy a little bit later. But we thought we'd start with bacon. Done hauling this around the entire trip, and I do not intend to haul it back. Can never go wrong with bacon in the back country. A little shelf stable bacon. Basically already cooked, just need to warm it up. That is the sights and sounds of Flavor Town. You just cannot beat bacon. Bacon's our best friend. Yeah, I'm telling you. I think we're good. I probably want to try it. Who wants to try the first bacon? Two each. Go ahead. No, we all got two. There's eight in here. All right. Just take Thank your you. desired doneness. Thank you very much. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Hot. <laughs> It's Sorry. warm. A little, a little primitive serving of that one. <laughs> it's hard to wait on it to cool down. Oh, mm. oh that's great. Oh, man. That's pretty good. Mm. Oh. Still, it was a pain, but it brought us steaks and bacon. Well, we are geared up lightly, pleasantly, for our little uh, day hike over to the Titcomb Basin. Should be about three and a half miles up there. We got the packs with a little bit of water. I needed something to hold the camera and lunch that we'll do up in the basin hopefully but there we go day number three heading to the basin I'm starting to get an idea of what it's all about I think after we get up over that it's gonna be pretty spectacular Getting a little steep now, but I think the reward lies over the top there. That is the Titcomb Basin. Holy smokers. That's kind of a sound of music pretty there. Look at the wildflowers. Oh, I see. This so trail here. Yeah, so we'll keep. Yeah, we don't want to go this way. Yeah, we definitely want to hang a left. So let's just keep going until we find a left trail here. Yeah. Trail runner out here. <laughs> All right. Just like Indiana. Oh, that's. Kind of getting into the basin proper now. Wow. What are you guys doing? Whoa! Snowballs! Oh. You don't often get to do that in the middle of July, at least in the northern hemisphere of the United or the world. Oh! That was pretty good! <laughs> nice arm! is one of those hikes that just views just keep getting better. Nifty lunch here. We got the summer sausage and cheese, ramen noodles, and bacon. Bacon. The leftover bacon and the ramen noodles. Can't, Can't go wrong waste. with bacon and anything. And then we've got a chicken tuna wrap or chicken wrap and a tuna wrap back there. And Pepperoni. Travis is going with the simple pepperoni lunch. The view we have for lunch, not bad. All right. Our visit to the basin was a success. We got lunch too, so now nice. we're heading back. <laughs> back to Island Lake and more fun. One last look. Until right? next time, if there is or ever is a next time. Man, what a place. view looking back towards where we were and the trail to get there. Cool little beach back on Highland Lake here. Whole different look from over here. That's where we were 
up there. That's the basin, but probably a little over a mile to go to our camp, which is kind of over in that direction. So we got to go all the way around the lake. So that's what our uh, day hike has done to us. <laughs> yeah, so after a successful day hike, perhaps one of the most epic ones ever, maybe the best one ever, I don't know, but we are back at camp, hiked about six and a half miles. So it was kind of a juicy little day hike. Back in camp relatively early in the afternoon and now all we have to do is enjoy the, our last night. Pretty much squeezed in everything we wanted to so far. It's been a big success. Looking forward to the last night. I'd say dinner tonight or maybe even appetizer tonight is spam, but I'm not sure it's either. It's sort of before the cheddar cheese bread, which is the appetizer, and before the all-American burger wrap, which is the dinner. So this is pre-appetizer spam. For those of you in foreign countries or elsewhere who have never experienced our wonderful American product called spam, oh, <laughs> it makes that lovely sound with the gelatin and everything on it. Yummy, yummy. I bet you're all drooling out there already. Mm -hmm. I would describe what it is, but it is one step up from liver, liver mush. Liver, liver liver mush. mush. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not, I've never had liver mush. Next trip we do liver mush. You gotta look that up, I can't explain it to you, but apparently a uh, southeast US sort of thing. The skeeters even love it. Oh, you gotta love the smell coming off of that. Trust me, it smells pretty darn good. You have bourbon in there? That's what happen on, happens on these kind of trips. What's that? Just the, the real food and the, and the delicacies. <laughs> Getting there. Really? <laughs> All right. What's everybody's plan for eating it? Here you go. Here's your plate. Oh, I'll use this. Uh, Spam in a cup. Travis's technique. Oh, I don't know if I can get it. Yeah, uh, it works. Thank you. Everybody's using their lid. <laughs> we didn't, we, we didn't we bring have. any plates on this trip. <laughs> How's it? Yeah, I'm bourbon oh, and it, is <laughs> it is bourbon infused. <laughs> oh man, is that good? <laughs> Try it with bourbon. Oh, bourbon? Oh, you got it in your bourbon. <laughs> Perfect texture, Detail. smooth the on the inside, crunchy Detail. on the outside. A little like smoked sausage mm. and ham and a little bacon mixed in. I think they do Doing a in sequence uh, yeah. cheddar yeah. cheese yeah. spread yeah. here, mixed in amongst everybody's dinner. Yeah. <laughs> but last night we got to get got to get the cheddar cheese I spread. Said, uh, saying, hey, he said, yeah. "Thank you." Yeah. Travis specialty. It's a, I didn't, I didn't know. Had perfect. Right from him, but right. I've seen this one. I'm like, mm. sounds yeah. good. Mm. I'm gonna take that though. Really? Somebody else grab one. All right, who's out? Oh, little soupy, but Carl. Oh, cool cracker. Thank you. Good travel. Thank you, David. You're welcome. Always tastes best on the last night of the wind. <laughs> Second dinner or third dinner or post appetizer meal or whatever is packet gourmet all American works burger wrap. Recall going back to like the earliest videos, this was one of the earliest ones, maybe the first one that Christian ever did with me. This was kind of like a rehash from the history times. All right. 10 minutes and we'll get going on the rest of this bad boy is done. I would recommend you just do it right in this pan. I smell spam oil tortilla. There you go. <laughs> All right. It's mostly olive oil tortillas. Oh, okay. That's what we're talking about. That looks pretty good. It's all American burger wrap with Wind River Range mosquitoes. Oh, I'm talking like food. Oh. Mm. The good? The hang. Good stuff. Yeah. And those yeah, old national parks like that, they just some, there's just a like culture. Madison bike. There's just a feel about it. That was like an awesome night. Yeah. When we wandered people down who camp there want to camp. Yeah. They don't want to party. They don't want to do that stuff. They're there to camp. It's and starting out. to get cooler again. Yeah, it cools down in a hurry. quickly. Got him. One down. Seven trillion <laughs> to go. <laughs> Lots of skiers. One less to worry about. Yeah, they were bad, but they weren't that bad. Yet. I would I call this almost a non-existent park yeah. trip. I, I was actually really nervous when we first started after that guy said that he had to turn yeah. around. We're just here to have wine and have a good weekend. Well, that's your definition. <laughs> late night deer hunt, not to kill the deer, but a deer came in our camp. Apparently we're going to look at them. Kind of hard to see, but right down there. 
little Mr. Deer. And not the worst setting of all times at night. The last five star resort was pretty good. Yeah, yeah that one was nice because we had the breeze from the uh, lake. We even had the little beach. Yeah, that that was an actual five star resort mm -hmm. for sure. You said all secure in sector seven. Yeah. Yes. All secure in sector seven. All secure in sector seven. Good morning. Welcome to the uh, fifth day of the trip, fourth day of backpacking, also known as the last day. Today's plan is pretty simple. We hike back to the car and I have to say I'm not looking forward to that uh, 13 or 14 mile hike back to the car. We're going to do it like Carl and I did it the last time two years ago. We'll probably hike back to Hobbs Lake which is a little less than halfway but a good lunch spot and then from there on in it's uh, pretty much all downhill to the car so not too bad after that but what a trip we checked off all the boxes that we wanted to and that epic day up at Titcomb Basin kind of makes up for what we missed out on in 2019 but not a lot of sleep to be had so if I'm looking a little bleary-eyed this morning it's because I am a little bleary-eyed this morning but a little Dunkin Donuts coffee will help that Dunkin' Donuts coffee, and uh, done it in a lot of places. I'm not sure many of them beat this, or even come close, but perfect way to end a really great hike. Somehow it tastes better when you're drinking it in that kind of a setting. Geared up and Pretty much Step ready to go on the last day <laughs> and hiking on Almost. day number four. Here we go. I think I said this last time we were here. I feel like I've already hiked a day's hike. We just made it to the trail. That's that little climb up to the saddle at Overlooks Island Lake. That's where we came from. <laughs> There's a little trail here, but nothing beyond it. And our camp was about a half mile in that direction. It's big time bushwhack, but one last look at Island Lake. You've been good to us, Island Lake. You sure are a beauty. One last look. And yes, it is an excuse to catch my breath. Wow. Reached the summit of the first climb. Now we're on the kind of false summit flat part. First climb of the day. One of three, I think, complete. Here's that fun little descent, in our case, down to Little Seneca, which you can just barely see over those rocks. So glad we're going this direction instead of the other direction this time. And down to Little Seneca. One last look at Little Seneca Lake. Making good time today. Not many stops and predominantly downhill so far. Back at Seneca Lake. And there's a campsite for future reference or somebody. Very end of it before we start the little hill. There's a little bonus uphill I'd forgotten about. There's actually a couple of them that switch back and up here, and then I think it's downhill to Hobbs after we get to the top. Significant milestone here. That's the trail up to our first night's camp, which means we've arrived at Hobbs Lake. Final last little water fill up here. At Hobbs Lake. This is the same exact spot Carl and I filled up for before the home stretch. A few little uphills I'd forgotten about. And we got one big one here coming up, but then that's it. It's really straight downhill to the car after that. So mentally prepare yourself for one more big uphill and more downhill to the car at a good pace. Climbed all the climbs. Now we're at the uh, photographer's point cutoff. We were on the photographer's point cutoff trail, which is what that is. And this is what we've been running into constantly, as you can kind of see. One of them involved a 
climbing through one of these trees. It was the only way you could get around it or through it. And I got hung up, drew a little blood. Not sure the cutoff trail was the right call this time. Yeah, you can kind of see the trail there and there. And then, oh, <laughs> it's all it's been. Look at this. I came up through, I guess there. You kind of lose the trail. I'm feeling the altitude more today than I have any day. I'm not sure why. I don't know if it's just a cumulative effect from four days of doing stuff, but not feeling it today, man. My heart's staying really elevated. It's not feeling all too good. I didn't need this, but we're getting close to the easier part. I think the bypass trail is almost finished. Made it to Miller Park as the haze rolls in. Boy, did we get lucky with the days we had. We're cruising now. This is that gentle downhill trail down to the Elkhart Park Trailhead. We're probably doing, I'm guessing, three and a half miles an hour. So a couple miles from the car. That is a sight, no matter how many times you do it, never gets old. Made it back to the trailhead and the car and civilization. So there you have it, the fifth trip of the 2021 season. The Wind River Range of Wyoming is in the books. It was a wonderful hike. That comfortable campground and that memorable steak and potato dinner on the first night. And the views, it just seemed to get better with every step you took out towards Highland Lake on the second day. And the third day, the epic day hike that we took out to the Titcomb Basin with the jaw-dropping scenery. It was a nice four days and I couldn't ask for any better hiking partners to share it with than Carl, Jeremy, Travis, and my son Christian. It just made it one special time. The Wind River Range, one of the most beautiful places on earth and also a place that gave us a great hike.